Okay, we are rolling, and today yeah, I'm going to go ahead and whip into this. Okay, oh, oh dude, great! <laughs> I'm so glad you did that, especially because none of this is being edited. This is all, <laughs> and this is this is just. Okay, awful. what's the what's the best what's the best intro? Yeah, yeah go, go down for a second, and then pop up. Yeah, I like that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now come back in, like in action. Oh, there it is, dude. Yeah, yeah. that's it right there. Got a couple edit points there, you know. Yeah, a lot, a lot of it. No one else has done this. That was amazing. Um, yeah. So that's, guys, a, that's the stunts. That, that's the stunts. That's the stunts. So, guys, uh, today I am talking to my dear friend Chris Romrell, who is such a good guy. Um, we have known each other, Chris, for what, like a few, like several years now, I'd say, because yeah, several years, yeah. We worked. Well, we officially met on a little YouTube shoot uh, that right. our friend A Todd was directing. It was a, a Jason Bourne spoof. While you, yeah. where you play Jason Bourne, and I played the guy that was sent out to take you down. And you yeah. know what? I won. <laughs> yeah, you I, did. I won and I and I, I just remember like taking a lot of glass and smashing it on your head and I really apologize for that. Uh, but, no, it was great. Oh, uh, I was loud baby. Was no worries, we're good. We're good with crying children. And um and so but then, you know, we we also worked on some other projects. We've been friends for uh for quite a bit since then and we did like that mobile strike video, which was awesome. Right. Yeah. While you were doing that mobile strike video, you're like, Sharon, I've got some really exciting news to tell you. And there was a whole journey you were going on at the time that we were doing that mobile strike video. So go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. I'll talk a little bit about the lead up to that. Yeah. So um, I had been pursuing stunts, you know, as a career since like 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me go into the other room. Anyway, I was just pursuing it you know it hadn't really taken off for me for during that time and can I anyway, ask something real quick like what what was your motivation for even doing stunts like what why did you want to do it uh because it was fun and yeah. uh desk jobs made me extremely depressed mm, uh sure so that was that was my motivation I, I love it I love it <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe this is better I don't know um yeah so anyway and then uh I got married in uh 2015 to my gorgeous wife and um we were living in my parents basement and had no money mm. um she got pregnant uh, pretty quick you know we started having uh, leo and uh, so she wasn't able to work oh my goodness buddy hey you need attention i love you come here the best. These are, oh, I love this. This is, this is totally it's great. There we go. Oh, oh buddy. Hi, buddy. Come here. Hey. So, anyway, um, during that time, you know, making zero money. Yeah. My parents were extremely patient. We were living in their, their basement. And uh, yeah. I had no connections to the, the major Hollywood industry. I had no idea how this was going to happen to me. I just, I just knew that it was going to happen. Yeah. And during this time, like I was under a lot of pressure. You just the baby it. was coming and I was like, I got to make money or I got to get a real job and I cannot get a real job where I'm going to be yeah. sad my <laughs> yeah. whole life. So I, um, I was praying and praying and praying and just asking for guidance. And, uh, I just had this feeling. I just knew that it was going to work out for me. Oh. And yeah. I knew for a fact that I was going to double Chris Pratt. I had no <laughs> idea. I had no idea how to knew that. I knew that, and I didn't share that with Kat, my wife. Wow. For, okay. when, when was uh, this? When was this? Um, 2016, end of 2016, I think. That's crazy. Um, Love it. I just yeah. knew it, and I didn't share it with Kat because I knew it would scare her. She was already like really nervous about how this was all going to work out, you know. Yeah. And um, I mean, understandably so. And I just knew it. I, it I, I don't know how I knew. I just knew it. Yeah. And then a friend sent me a, a screenshot of, from a Facebook group that I wasn't cool enough to be a part of. It was uh, for professional stunt people. Yeah. And one of the, the, the people was looking for a 6'3 person that could do Hong Kong style fight scenes. Mm. And the deadline to send your stuff in was like five minutes away. And I was like, oh, no. I sent my stuff in, I hurried and just cobbled something together. I sent it out 
Wait, so you're just expecting, you, you piece together something of stuff you've done in the well, past? Well, I just, I just took links from fight scenes I'd done with friends and stuff, and I put it on there. And I didn't expect a response because I had never gotten a response, you know, from the, all these people that I respected before. Um, but I got a response and it said, hey, your stuff was great. You know, you just look a little too young for what we're doing right now. And I was like, hey, awesome. That's a soft blow off. I'm, I'm all for that. Sure. And uh, yeah. she said, hey, but uh, keep, keep me updated with what you're doing. We might be able to use you for our next thing. Yeah. And I had no idea that their next thing was Avengers. And uh, yeah. turns out that they were looking for a new double for Chris Pratt to kind of hang with the rest of the Infinity War crew, you know, that mm. could, I mean, all these other characters have so many other powers. They wanted to kind of up Star-Lord's yeah. factor, you know, have yeah. them do more actiony things. And I kind of fit the bill. And uh, luckily enough, I, I kept in contact with them. Every month or so, I would send them something. Sometimes I'd get a reply. Most of the time, I wouldn't. I would just be like, they probably hated it. And they hate me. I don't know. You know? Because yeah. you wouldn't hear. That's the whole audition process that's kind of, of, course, of course, nerve wracking. Yeah. Right? Of course. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, I got a call back there. Like, hey, we would love you to double Chris Pratt. Can you be to a wardrobe fitting at this address? Like, and they, at this they time, call you out of the blue, and they just said this. Pretty this much, thing. yeah. I mean, yeah. there's still kind of a semi-audition process. They wanted to see the, the, the clothes fit. For sure. Hi, buddy. And um, the address was in LA, and I didn't tell them that I lived in Utah at the time. Okay. And the, the they needed me to get to this this fitting the next day, and I was like, yeah, I can do that. Of course. I bought a ticket with uh, I think some student loan money or something. I can't even yeah. remember how I got. The money together for it yeah and i flew out there i i made it to the fitting the clothes fit perfectly and uh i was in and uh Gosh, it kind of worked out so yeah that's, that's that's how i got that gig hey, buddy, you got something to say? Oh, he's so proud he's so <laughs> proud of you um that's awesome man and so basically anytime star lord puts the mask on and does action it's you is that correct uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, a lot of times when it's, when the mask is on, the thing about, uh, about Chris Pratt is that he is so freaking talented, mm. so talented. I mean, he can do everything that I can do and he can make it look better. Like oftentimes I'm, I'm hoping that people don't notice when he's doing the action. Really? That, he does a lot like, of the action. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, as much as he can do, right? I mean, there's things that basically I'm expendable, you know? No and way. he's yeah. he's carrying the movie so they can't really risk hurting him mm -hmm. so when he does his action it's amazing yeah he's so good he just brings so much swagger to every movement so he's a really talented mofo yeah <laughs> that's great that's awesome man well I'm, I'm glad and and you said you've had like a great time working with him oh my gosh he is the coolest dude super down to earth and just a good dude yeah yeah, that's awesome, man. And hopefully you guys keep working together. I mean, it seems like you're going to be in it for the long haul, you know? I hope so. You know, I mean, you never, I never, I never count on things like, like, you know, the next movie or whatever, of course, but yeah. I hope, you know? Yeah. And it's yeah. worked out pretty well so far. So something that, that, that's interesting that you just kind of mentioned to me, which I wanted to talk a little bit about was you said you had an inkling that you were going to double for Chris Pratt. Yeah. But you didn't even want to share with anybody. You just knew that this was going to happen. You didn't know how. I just knew I was going to sound like a crazy person if I told people, like, I know. Yeah. So where do you think that inspiration came from? Like, what, what, was, what was that thought from? I mean, I was just praying a lot at that time. And I don't think that there's any other place it could have been than just an answer to prayer. Mm. Because I was under so much stress. And, like, I mean, I could have just been a crazy person, right? Sure. And nothing could have come from it. But like, like, it's just so, there's so many coincidences, absolute insane yeah. coincidences that all lined up that basically allowed me to get that job. And oh, I mean, yeah. it is just, I, I'm the right size. You know, they, they needed someone right then. The, the coordinator had, was looking for somebody with, with my dimensions for a movie previously. Like I just fit the bill so well and at just the right time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think that there was any other way to know 
unless you were crazy. You know, and then, but it wouldn't have worked out if I was crazy. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe it just was super luck. Dude, I don't know. No, you know what? I, I love that, man. I love, I love when it's like, there's things that are orchestrated that are completely out of your control, but yet they all line up, boom, 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 yeah. boom, to make it so that that crazy dream that you had in your head uh, could be in a reality. Yeah. You know? Um, I, uh, you know, it, interestingly enough, I've had those experiences for sure. I, as an actor, I've definitely had those experiences. Um, I used to, and, and what I love about it is you were, you were mentioning to your, to, to me, you hate a desk job and you want to have fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that was your motivation. Dude, that's totally my yeah. motivation. You know, um, right. I mean, I, I acting brings me a lot of joy and I love to have fun. Um, well, I remember, when I was working at Sundance, um, this one year I used to, well, like every year I used to do like this prank video at Sundance because I'm a snowboard instructor. I don't know if you knew that or not, but I'm a snowboard instructor. I did instructor. not know that. That's awesome. Know, yeah, yeah. But huh. uh, what I would do is I would pretend like I had never been before and I would make one of the new instructors that, that's never met me before teach me. And I have like a thick Indian accent and we'd film it. And I'd just be like, I, I'm very sorry. I, I, I know, I know I need to go, but you know, and I was just like, like just rambling stuff like that. Yeah. And I would I'd mess up and have like, like make her have like the worst time. And then in the end, I would like say like a fake prayer and then just vomit down the mountain. Like it was just, <laughs> right? well, it was, I, I used to do this every year. And um, this one particular year, uh, Ben Stiller used to come to that resort. And this one particular year, he, I met him briefly because my boss was teaching him how to board. And yeah. um, so I met him and the, the following day I did the prank and Ben sees me. So he waves to me, but I kind of uh, do like this little head nod thing. Cause I didn't want to like blow my cover or whatever. Yeah. And um, the next thing I know, he was like turning to my boss. He's like, dude, what the heck? Why is this guy like such a jerk? Like he was so nice to me the day before. And my boss like, no, no, no listen, dude, he's got to be incognito. He's doing this prank. So after while, while I was doing this prank, I guess Ben was watching me do it. Because after I was finished, and I was just kind of like watching this video of how it all look, looked. He came up to me, like, thanked me. He's like, dude, like, that was some of the funniest stuff I've ever seen. I'm like, dude, <laughs> you even saw that. So then he's like asking to review the footage. And so he watches it and he's like crying laughing. And then like, <laughs> the next day after that, he, he's like, so what do you want to do in life? And I'm like, well, I, I'm actually planning on going to LA and I'm going to be an actor. He's like, oh, you want to be an actor? Okay. Well, I'm like, look, I don't want to like bother you. I mean, you know, yeah. he asked. He said, no, no, dude, let me give you some advice. And he sat me down and he was super gracious to me. He gave me some great advice. That's cool. He like this number to his assistant and his production company. And then when I moved to LA, I ended up interning at his office for a while. Awesome. And, and then like, I would go, I went to like this other acting class, like this brand new acting class. And uh, Tom Cruise happened to be there that day. <laughs> I mean, it was just like <laughs> random stuff, right? Yeah. You cannot write these things, but yet it just happened serendipitously. Yeah. yeah. So I, I am a big believer in that. And, and, you know, you're such a good guy. So I'm so grateful. Like all this stuff has happened to you, you know, and, oh, thank um, you. Appreciate and it. honestly, like I, I only hope the best for you in your future and hopefully you can, you and Chris can do a lot more movies together. Cause uh, I think, I think that's just awesome. Um, that's the hope. I mean, best yeah. boss ever. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Cause you can't, you can never tell the future, you know, you can always, yeah. You have an inkling, you have a hope, and you go for something, but you have no idea how the future is going to turn out. That's true. So I guess using that kind of wisdom and that thought process of, of those things, how do you think we can have uh, like more hope right now? Because like no one expected us to be in this situation that we're in, you know? I mean, for me, one thing that I look at is I just, I try to take a, a perspective, mm -hmm. a higher perspective. Um, and not necessarily spiritually, I mean, just the timeline wise of the world. Yeah. There are so many times in the history of the world that people have, have thought that they are on the brink of total collapse. Yes. You know, that everything is going down and nothing's ever going to come back up. Um, I mean, you can, you can pinpoint these, these sections of history. Yeah. I mean, we lived through it in uh, 2001. You know, when the Twin Towers collapsed, you know, it was like yep. instant change and everybody was so uncertain for so long. We, we thought maybe we'd be under attack for forever, you know, sure. who knows, you know, lots of fear going on, yeah. but we got through it. And I think the same thing here, it's, it's going to be 
difficult, but the most difficult thing about it is the unknown. But if you just trust that things kind of work themselves out, yeah, um, it's a little easier to manage. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of people um, that are facing uh, tons of anxiety, right? And yeah, like buying and and all that stuff. Like, how do you um, how do you face the unknown with calmness? And how do you how do you face it with uh, a sense of like a peace that things will work out? Like, what do you what do you specifically do? I mean, I, that's kind of hard for me to answer for everybody because I mean, for me, yeah, uh, I've been extremely extremely blessed in the last couple of years, you know, and and we have savings and and things, and so we are okay. We're gonna be okay to to get through, you know. Yeah. So for me, I don't have a lot of the same anxieties that a lot of my friends and a lot of people that I know do, you know, people are losing their jobs. People yeah. that have started companies are and then put everything into that. They're losing their companies. Yeah. I don't know. I have, I have faced that. Um, so I don't know that I can offer good advice yeah. to a lot of people that are in kind of the deep yeah. end of it, you know? Yeah. And th well, the truth is, is like, I I'm, I'm talking to a lot of different people about different things. Yeah they're in different situations, right? And I guess specifically, like, what have you done for yourself? Maybe we can talk about that a little bit. I mean, one thing that I think is helpful mm -hmm. is, I mean, you can train the YouTube algorithm okay. in a way, right? Like, for instance, when, when Kat uh, was pregnant, mm -hmm. um, she would go in on Facebook, all of a sudden, all these Facebook uh, news reports of kidnapped children and you know abused children and all these like just terrible things happening to children just appeared on our timeline like over and over again and basically what was happening is that that was something that she was worried about right so she was clicking on these links she was reading these articles getting scared and facebook records you know what links you click on it records how long you look at a certain ad you know yeah. so if you stop and look at something you don't even have to click on it but if you stop and look at it it records that yeah. it knows what you're interested in yeah um and so it'll give you more of that, right? So her feed was just inundated with all these terrible things that you don't want to yeah, read for sure. while you're pregnant, Yeah, you know? Like all these horror stories. And so she had to consciously swipe past those things quickly and not click on those links. And in no time at all, her, her timeline changed. Mm -hmm. And I try to do the same thing with, um, with this pandemic. There's not much I can do personally, you know, besides stay in and, um, try to keep myself healthy, healthy, you know, social distance, you know, just yeah. do the basics, right? There's not much else I can do personally. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that there is much need for me to read all of this negative yeah. news stuff. You know, I think the, the, the best I can do is just get me real paranoid and get me real worried yeah. and get me real worked out. Yeah. You know, so I think that staying positive is all about what you focus on you know in your social media in your news reports whatever yeah because it's like whatever you uh put your attention to grows yeah honest, you know oh yeah and so it's just like from a social media perspective from a life perspective like just whatever you're putting your attention on grows and right so um yeah it's kind of like um it's it's kind of like um yeah you can choose where you want to where you want to focus like if you want to just keep on looking at more and more information about covid it's i mean i guess it's nice to keep yourself updated but then right start getting into like the panic mode or, or right or in fear i mean I it's, it's a balancing act because you want to you yeah. want to stay updated but you also don't want to get inundated you know yeah completely it is a balancing act well, I don't know, man. I mean, you're, you're awesome. And I'm really grateful that like, that you're such a positive light into the world. You know, I mean, it's interesting because there's, there's a lot of people right now that, that have the limelight that are able to like do some real good and, and, and really encourage people to just to kind of hang in there and, and to keep, to, to keep going, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've uh, you've met Chris Evans. I'm assuming you may have met Chris Evans just working on the on the movies that you've yeah. done. Um, but I I look at some of his stuff on Twitter and stuff, and he just seems to be very positive out there and like really keep encouraging people. And I think like that's what we need. We need more people that are constantly like just feeding the world with with more goodness. 
right um and yeah it's like i think that's that's all we can really do you know from our home or whatever you know yeah so well cool man well do you have any questions for me or i feel like i'm hogging the discussion but uh, what's up next for you man what uh what are you hmm. i mean besides these interviews what uh you're always hustling that's one thing i love about you oh. is that you yeah. always have something going yeah. on like 10 things actually <laughs> Yeah. And so yeah. I mean, besides these interviews, what else are you doing? What are you up to? Well, you know, it's a good question. I mean, I was, uh, I, I, and I still am, I suppose, um, I was putting together a TV show. It was, uh, I, we put the pilot together already. Yeah. And I was in the process of shopping it around at like Disney and Netflix and stuff like that. Yeah. And then things kind of shut down because of coronavirus. But um, it, it hasn't really stopped me from like, we put it online and we we've shared it and like it's got over i, I don't know it's not like a ton like like a little over four thousand views on facebook dude awesome yeah. but but the response has been fantastic and that's what we yeah. want you know and so now we're like all right well i didn't expect to put it online but but people seem to enjoy it and they really like it and so hopefully when things kind of shut down or, or pick back up excuse me um we'll be able to take those numbers and be like look people like it you know people enjoy it yeah so there's that. I am, I'm putting that together. Um, I have a kid's show that I've been putting together. Um, Which you've told me about before and yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, that one was super fun and, um, and we'll see how, how that goes as well. Um, so doing that one. And then uh, honestly, my, my thing is I'm trying not to attach myself to any particular project or to say it has to be this project. Right. I just have no idea. I have no idea how things are gonna work out. Uh, I Staying do, adaptable. Yeah, you got to be adaptable because the yeah. thing is I find that um, like I like to have direction. I like to have goals that give me direction so I can move forward in a certain particular way. But I don't like to have the attachments to what that direction is going to be like any because I have no idea. I have no idea how right. things turn out. And so being kind of flexible with that helps me a, a lot. And then then I can kind of keep myself open for whatever transpires. That That's how sense. I thrive too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, mean, I always picture it like, uh, you know, yeah. if I have a big goal, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a, a ship out in open water. Yeah. And I just pick the direction that I think will lead me there fastest. Yeah. And I just correct course as I go along. Yeah. And, and slowly hone into the direct path to where I'm going as I'm doing it, you know? Yeah. Instead of trying to figure out the direct path before I start. Before you start. Well, it, I love like, the, the, the just the stunt double from Chris Pratt analogy is fantastic because it's like you had an inkling, you had a dream, you knew it was going to happen, and then you just kind of put energy towards it. You had no idea how it was going to happen, you know, you had no clue. You just kind of you believed, and and you went for it, and then all of a sudden, certain things that you had no control over suddenly appeared in your life. That if you just right. did certain things, it would it would lead to to something, and now you here you are. You know what I mean? And you know, a lot of people have big dreams that they follow and they never get to that big dream, but yeah. because they followed it, it led to so many opportunities that they would have never had the opportunity, they, they would have never seen before, you yeah. know? Just because you're in unknown territory, all of a sudden, so many more options open up to you. Completely, man. I mean, and I think that's the, the key. So for me, like a philosophy I have is before I do any of these things, um, like from my own sp spiritual makeup and whatever, I feel like you have to have joy before you even go on your journey, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, I really try to, to, um, do like the spiritual practices that I have, you know, and for me, it's like about connecting to Jesus, but like for other people, it's like deep meditation, whatever it is. It's like, I, I truly tell people like, Hey, build your foundation of joy up first before you even begin your journey. Because then you're not expecting the, the dream, whatever it is out there to fulfill you. You're already fulfilled. It never, it never does, you know, and that's not the, yeah. I feel like the journey is, is fulfilling yeah. because it's, it's growth and it's, you know, you're learning things along the way you're building and it's fun to be yeah. creative. It's fun to build. It's fun to, to see progress. Yeah. Right. But like it's, once you get there, you'll realize that, that that thing that you were fighting for is not the source of joy. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like totally. if 12 year old me could see where I am right now, it'd be like, well, that's it. 
you've Not reached it. the top. That's the pinnacle, yeah. right? And you know what? It is the greatest job in the world, right? Yeah. But it is not my source of happiness. It is a, it is, it fulfills me in a certain aspect of my life. Right. But like now my family, my family is the pinnacle of joy. And as I focus on that and focus on like, just trying to be a better dad, mm. like it's difficult. Um, but there are moments of like joy and fulfillment that my career couldn't give me. Mm, I love that, man. I, I love that. That's, that's, that's awesome. You know what I mean? And that, that, that is, that is the case for me as well. I mean, um, I've had the opportunity to work on some really cool TV shows as an actor, you know? Yeah. And, um, and it's been awesome. Like I, like I did, uh, like a couple episodes on Silicon Valley. I did, um, Criminal Minds. It was awesome. We had a, had a great time. But that being said, sometimes my greatest joy comes from just creating stuff with my friends, you know, like oh, yeah. a bunch of stuff with my friends, knowing I'm making these fun memories with them gives me so much happiness and like, just, oh, yeah. you know, and, and there's a difference. There's a difference. difference. There's a huge difference. And, yeah. and like some of those, those, those fun, the most fun jobs I've had, like come from like when I'm like, it's, I don't know. It's just like a bunch of friends, like running around, goofing around, like getting grabbing oh, yeah. here and there, you know, <laughs> like it's, there's just a memory that comes from creating that, you know, that, you won't have like on those really really big sets even though they were super oh, yeah. fulfilling in certain ways they weren't the end all you know yeah i mean they're they're fun and they're it's a different kind of enjoyment but yeah. when you're working with your friends you know there's a creativity there's a, a spark in it yeah. that just comes from some place in your heart you know yes. whereas when it's like i don't know when it's a bigger movie it kind of comes from a place of necessity you know getting paid and yeah, also sure just kind of like a societal cool factor. You're like, it's kind of an outward force. It's like kind of brings you joy a little bit, you know? I mean, for me, I really enjoy what I do anyway. So there's some inward, but when you're with your friends, it's just pure spark. It, it, it is, you know? And like, I, I, I still keep going back to like that, uh, the Jason Bourne thing that we did, you know? I mean, it was yeah. just so insanely ridiculous, but, uh, but I just remember having a ton of fun with you, you know? Yeah, no, it was fun, uh, man. It was, we had a good time, you know, so. But yeah, man, I think, I, I think that's the key, right? Is like to figuring out ways to have joy right now. Like whatever that yeah. is, like, uh, you know, finding your own spiritual path or your, your own journey, or meditation, whatever that looks like for you to have that, your family, um, and, and make that your center of joy. And if you do that, I find that my dreams get fulfilled a lot more. It, it's almost like the dreams uh and the success are like the byproduct of the joy that you already have if that makes sense i agree i think um, i mean people are attracted to people that are happy or that right. have joy right and i think that there is a certain level of i would say desperation that comes from chasing joy you know like from outside forces right? And it's, it's, you'll never catch it. You're, it's always right on the cusp. It's always the next thing, the next thing, the next thing will get you there. Yeah. But it never does. It's, it, it'll give you a lot of fun. It'll give you a lot of pleasure, you know, but mm -hmm. it's really starts from the inside and radiates outward. Mm, I I, love that, man. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I totally agree because that's, um, I, I mean, in my experience, that's what it's been for me. Yeah. Some of my greatest experiences uh, auditioning Wait, uh, uh, which I, I do not really enjoy the process of auditioning at all. But some of the greatest experiences I've had auditioning are when I'm already so joyful before I even go to the audition that I'm like, man, I just don't even care what happens. I, I don't care. Like, yeah. this is gonna be a fun experience. This is going to be, this is going to be my acting class. This is just going to be a yeah. fun experience for me. I don't care about the outcome. And a lot of times when I go in like that, I end up booking the job. Because your energy is so yeah. different from probably 90% of the people that go in there. Yeah. You know, they're, they're wanting the job. They're needing the job. If you feel like, you know what, this is, I'm just going to go in there, throw out an audition and leave yeah. and not get a call. There's power in that. And yeah. people recognize that. Like, man, that guy had a lot of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> And zero I, expectations. I like yeah. that. <laughs> I, I, I remember going to this one casting uh, session for a show, Angie Tribeca. That's what it was. Yeah. And um, 
And before I went in, um, I, I noticed that they had cast another TV show that um, I was friends with a lot of the actors from that show. Yeah. So I went in and I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys, wait a minute did you guys cast that show? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we did. I'm like, no way. Like I'm friends with so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. And they're like, wait, what? And like for like the next 10, like five, 10 minutes, we just kept talking about those, those people that we knew. And they're like, oh yeah, I guess we should do this audition. And I'm like, all right, well, I'll do the audition. But afterwards, can I please get a picture with you guys? Cause I want to text them. And they're like, yeah. yeah, sure. And I mean, the audition was fine and everything. It was okay, I guess. But I took this picture, but they, I guess they liked me so much, then they ended up casting me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? And that's, that's so, a huge difference. I see that yeah. in the, the stunt world. I see it in the yeah. acting world. You know, yeah. uh, people would rather work with people that they'll enjoy being around for 10, 12 hours a day, yeah. for four to five months at a time, yeah. than people that are really talented, but nobody wants to be around. Uh, yeah, man. You know, like there are a lot of people that aren't that talented that are working all the time because they're great to be around and yeah. nobody's complaining because they're great to be around. And there's people that aren't working all the time that are crazy talented yeah. that cannot book a job because no. nobody wants to be around it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's all about your energy, dude. It's all about your energy and um, what, what you can do right now to, to maintain that. So I, I think one of the things you say, what's next for me, I think one of the things I want to do is um, now that in a sense, the rat race, if you will, has kind of temporarily halted, uh, I want to take a lot of time introspecting and, and yeah. you know, take some time and um, focusing on the things that bring me joy, spend some time in nature, the mountains and all that stuff and um, kind of really recenter. Re so yeah, yeah. recenter. So well, man, you are so awesome. Thank you for taking the time to even chat with me. Uh, you're the best. And, Dude, uh, you're the biggest hype man ever, and I love it. That's why, that's why people love being around you. You're just like, you're the best. You're the, best. You're the greatest. Yeah. Everybody believes it. And I think that's, that's your power. That's your superpower. Oh, man. Uh, well, one of these days that the hype, that hype power will, uh, will be what is needed in a Marvel movie. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Oh, definitely, dude. Hype man. <laughs> Hype man. He just like uh, when, when people, when the superheroes are down, you know, it's the, yeah. the, the bad moment. The yeah. guy, bad guy's about to kill them. You yeah. come in, you're like, you can do it. You're the best. I believe in you. And they're like, yeah, I can do it. <laughs> That's it, man. That's your superpower. This was my audition, dude. I think I, I, think I booked the job. So Yeah, dude. Kevin? <laughs> yeah. Kevin Feige's here. He's watching. Kevin Feige's here. Okay, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Awesome, dude. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, you're awesome. And uh, yeah, I will probably post this interview uh, or this conversation next week. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Good talking to you, dude. Good chatting with you. Okay. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.